Well, I want to introduce to many of someone that many of you already know, uh, Troy Titus and his wife Sarah and their four daughters have been here with us at New Hope almost six months yep. as our children's minister. But what's unique about that is Troy's background. And probably many people don't know about that already, do they? No. So uh, we want to kind of share a little bit with that uh, to you today. And let's just start from um, Troy was adopted. And uh, tell us about that with your, your adoptive parents, how they came to decide to do that. And, and you know, you have brothers and sisters, et cetera. Yeah, I have one sister. And my adopted parents, or my parents, I just call them my real parents, mm -hmm. they decided to adopt because they were not able to have kids themselves. And it was through a family doctor. Back then you could do that. A family doctor mm -hmm. knew that there were, there were a couple children that were needing good parents, and he knew right away that they would be great parents. And so he's the one who kind of initiated things, and the rest is history. Okay, so um, tell us about your birth mother. Well, for a long time, I had no idea who she was. When you say long time, I mean the first 30 years of your life, 40 years of your life, how long? It's a long time. Almost my whole life. It's only been within the past five years that I even knew who she was or that she was still living. And for the record, Troy is 45. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I feel older sometimes. <laughs> So, okay, so for 40 years you didn't know who your mom was? No, and what had happened is that my wife was visiting my parents one day, and as sometimes happens, a piece of mail that belonged to me got sent to their house, and my mom handed it to my wife, and she just opened it and saw that it was this letter from my birth mother. And she was kind of shocked, and my mom was asking, oh, what is it, is it a... a friend that Troy met in another mm -hmm. ministry he was a part of or something like that and she was like no and she just quickly folded it up and stuck it back in the envelope and then brought it home that night and said you need to read this but uh, my birth mother I think it was kind of a typical story uh, she was not married uh, she was not living a, a Christian a, a morally healthy life right. at that point in time and uh, she had a, a boyfriend and and uh, they, she got pregnant, and um, I was the result of that. Now, I'm curious, uh, I'm going to go back and forth on this, but um, what went through her mind you said, in, in the time that you have met her and talked with her? Did you have a chance to ask her? So what, what went through your mind at that time as to the choices that you had before you, when, when she found out that she was pregnant? There was a lot going through her mind, and that's where I think... This story is kind of a, just an awesome God story. Um, she had some pretty serious health problems in her family history. Her grandmother had died very young of some very rare uh, disorders that affect the women. Her mother had also died very young of these same rare disorders. And when she was pregnant with me, she discovered that she had the same, she had inherited the same disorder, and the doctor said, this is going to take your life. Wow. Did you give her a time frame? How long? It would have been pretty quick. The doctor said that the only way for her to save her life, uh, or even have a chance at saving her life, was to terminate the pregnancy. You? Yes. To get rid of me and that they might have a chance at fixing some of these problems. And then on top of that, I think another thing that was going through her mind is her relationship with this guy was just not what it was supposed to be. Uh, you know, you can imagine that she probably dreamed of having a happy life with him and, mm -hmm. and getting married and all these things, but that's just not how it turned out. He, he was into drugs. He was abusive. Uh, he was not a healthy person to be around. And then after he found out she was pregnant, he took off to California. And then when he came back from California, out of the blue with no announcement, he hooked up with her best friend. Wow. So she had lost a relationship that she thought was going to last. 
She had lost uh, her integrity, you know, and back in, in those days uh, to be pregnant and not be married carried a lot more pain probably than what it does even now. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that here, her life was, was going to come to an end and, and the, the, the only counsel she had was from the doctor saying, you need to end this pregnancy. So what changed her mind? Uh, how, did, how was it that she said, no, I am going to have this baby? Well, that's a pretty cool story. So all these years later, this letter comes to me in the mail mm -hmm. right, that my wife gets from my parents. And I read it, and we decide to open up contact with her, which took quite a while to do that. We eased into it. But she had shared with me that she said, I knew I had made one mistake. And she said, when the doctors said, you need to terminate this pregnancy, she said, I've made one mistake. I'm not going to make two. And so she decided to give me life. She chose life over her own. So she must have said to the doctor, the family doctor, I'm not going to keep this baby if you know of somebody. Is that kind of the way that progressed? Something like that. It ended up being that the same family doctor that she had mm -hmm. was uh, my parents' family mm -hmm. doctor. And so he's the one who connected us together. So at the time, I, in talking to you earlier, I know that uh, you're biological mother was not a Christian. Tell us how that changed after you made contact with her or over the years before you even made contact with her. Yeah, that's that's a really cool thing how God worked in her life. So she was not a Christian when I was born. Mm -hmm. uh, several years later, she met a, a man, they fell in love, they got married, and they became Christians together. They found the Lord, and or I should say he found them. And it was so... It was so cool to hear her talk about that story. And because of the uh, surgery she ended up having, I mean, by God's grace, she survived. And the, the doctors did a surgery on her while she was pregnant, and she ended up living. But she gets married several years later. She gives her life to the Lord, and they get married, and then they adopt children because she was not able to have any children mm -hmm. after that. So it's kind of odd, odd that the children that she had, who were hers, she adopted, mm -hmm. and the one that um, that she had naturally um, ended up being someone else's child. But that's so kind of how God works. You've progressed in your relationship with your mother since that time. Yeah. How 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 have your adopted parents? How did they react to that? And respond to that? Were they at all jealous or anything like that? No, mom and dad were always really supportive of us finding our biological parents. They told us, my sister and I, way back when we were kids, they said, if you ever want to find your biological parents, we understand and not only are we supportive, but we'll help you find them. My sister chose to, to connect with her biological mother uh, early, but I just never felt the need to do that. So I just kind of threw that out of my mind, and I knew I would never do that. I already had a mom and dad, I didn't have a reason to go looking for someone. Um, but as it ended up, that person ended up finding me. I, uh, sometimes, um, and I don't know if I've shared with you, you probably know, that I had cancer many years ago, and there are times when uh, realizing I, I could have taken my life uh, puts a, a burden of, uh, I don't want to say guilt, but an appreciation for life, how does that make you feel knowing that your mother could have aborted you and, and here you are today? Um, it's got to give you an appreciation for life too. It does. Um, a great appreciation for grace. She had every reason to end that pregnancy. Using man's way of thinking. Using man's way of thinking. You yeah. Know, earthly priorities. Right. The future from that vantage point was not looking very good for her. So she gave me an incredible gift. Mm -hmm. And I I don't even think I don't even think that I have fully grasped how great of a gift that really was.
So has, has your mother, your biological mother, has she met Sarah and, and your girls? She has. Um, we took a vacation and we we're going to stay in a little cabin some, somewhere and just get away from everything. And on the way, we decided to spend a couple days with her. And that was our first real time together. We thought, well, we'll, we'll try this out, see what happens. And I think God's kind of guided the rest of this. I think it's, I think this is the right thing to do. And so she got to meet the girls and it was a really cool time because she invited over her boys. And so they got to meet us and I got to meet them. And, yeah. and we all just kind of understood there was no, there were no negative feelings about uh, who should or should not be in whose family. It was more of just an admiration of how, how good God is mm -hmm. that he saved us from ourselves. Because that, that's really what it was all about. Well, that's a spiritual application to the, yeah. the body of Christ as a whole, isn't it? Yeah. No matter where we've been, what we've done, what we've come from, yeah. we're family. Yeah. I, I, you know, from, I'm thinking about you now being a children's minister and how you can impact the lives of uh, little children into their teenage and their adult years, all because mom made that choice. Yes. How powerful is that? Now, the, I mean, is there a certain amount of pride on her part or what you have become and what you do and your walk with the Lord, et cetera? Not pride. I, I think just excitement about God's incredible grace. Mm -hmm. She told me about the realization when this all kind of came came about, she she sent the letter to us, as I shared earlier. We had set up a fake Facebook account to talk with her because I wanted to make sure this was not some identity stealing, okay. you know, something weird was going on. So we had this fake Facebook site set up, and after we were able to verify her identity and who she really was, then I gave her the link to my real Facebook where you have all these pictures of kids getting baptized and kids from camp and mm -hmm. all these wonderful times that God was really working in the ministry that I had a chance to be a part of. And she saw that and she, she contacted us right away. She wrote us and she said, when I saw those pictures on that Facebook and I'd wondered all these years, she had wondered all these years after she got saved, she had wondered, is my little boy saved? Did he... Did he come to know Jesus? Mm -hmm. And it was really cool because she said, when I saw those pictures, she just broke down and, and cried in praise of God. You know, God, you are so good. Um, so it was, it was pretty cool to hear that testimony from her. Have your uh, biological parents and, and your mother, have they met? Yeah. Perhaps are your adopted parents and, and they have met? Yeah, my mom has met her. My dad, of course, passed away a year and a half ago. Okay. So he did not get a chance to meet her. But mom met her and it was a very unique meeting because they hit it off. They became like best buddies. And I I was hoping that it would go well, but I didn't expect it to go that well. So it's kind of like, okay. So we're all They forgot all about you, huh? Yeah, they did. That was the that was the funny thing about it. They, they were like, oh, my mom comes up to me afterwards and she said, I think you would have been just fine no matter who you grew up with. I'm like, whoa, 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 let's, let's not go that far. <laughs> but yeah, so they, uh, they get along great and they contact each other periodically. I know that, I mean, I know you well enough to know that you and I share the same heart when it comes to those individuals who have had an abortion and how God's grace speaks to them as well. Um, can you address that or, or, or speak to um, what God says to those individuals who did choose that other alternative? Yeah, I can. You know, whether it's abortion or any other sin that we've been entangled up in, all of us need to choose life. And I think when God says in his word to choose life, I don't think he was just talking about abortions. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, the audience, that wasn't the audience. I think that he, it's just like my birth mother, she had made some choices that were not life choices. 
And then in the midst of some of the, the results of those choices, she said, from now on, I'm choosing life. And I think that's what all of us need to do. Instead of living in the death of a past choice, we need to choose life now. Mm -hmm. Choose life for yourself. You know, that one choice that she made to give life resulted in a lot of people getting saved. But I think the same would happen today. I think that whether it's a person who used to do drugs or used to, went through a divorce or used to lie or used to be a hypocrite, um, used to be a Pharisee, had an abortion in the past, whatever it happens to be, I think what God is calling all of us to do is to choose life for ourselves now. Today. Well, the interesting thing about what Paul says is that some of you once were like this. You yeah. did these things, this, this, and this. Yeah. You once were, but now. Yeah. But now. And that's the thing that we have to focus on is, okay, all of us, as you said, have made mistakes. Um, but that's all in the past. You've been washed. Mm -hmm. And we need to go from this point forward and allow God to redeem our experiences. We never know who we can minister to mm -hmm. because we've been through a similar experience as somebody else. Yeah, I think God is an expert. As, I mean, as you know, he always can bring beauty out of ashes, mm -hmm. beauty out of ashes, beauty out of ashes. We just have got to trust him by choosing life. Yeah. And, um, well, yeah. I, want, I want people to know that uh, there's, there's bound to be others out there, Troy, who um, resonate with what you went through. Maybe they were th through something similar. Just to know that they have an advocate here, that you, you're available to visit and, yeah. and help them through that process too. Yeah, would love to. Uh, but just want you to know we appreciate having you at New Hope Christian Church. Hey, we're excited to be here. And, and what God uh, takes our experiences and the people that we've come in contact with and uh, does something beautiful from that, and here you are. Yeah. And uh, who knows how many lives you're going to impact uh, as time goes forward. But thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks. So God much. bless you, man. Thanks, man. Okay.